I have to make a confession. I am not what you consider an organized person. I'm very laid back. So I literally had to research and come up with a system to make me organize my closet. Okay, so I have a little disclaimer here. There's a lot of YouTube channels of people who are literally obsessional people with organization and masters of organization. This is not our subject today. It's a little bit more simple. We just try, gonna share with you a few things that we learned uh, over the years. And the title of your piece was The 12 Commandments for Organizing Your Closet. So I'm gonna first read the introduction of this beautiful article so that you can interject because you are giving a few examples. I know you already laugh because you know exactly what is in the, introduction, in the introduction. But you start like this. Why organize your closet? It may seem like a superficial goal, specifically in these times of pandemic and, you know, organizing your closet sound like a little bit superficial, but it's really about preserving your investment when you invest into a wardrobe and lifting your mood. And I think this is one of the most important thing because in the morning, when it's easy for you to dress up, you don't, you know, you don't have to do hide and seek and try to find something. It can put you directly in a good mood. Is that right? I have to say, every time I've done it, it is a mood lifter. Okay, that and doing some weight training. Those are the two things that automatically lift me up. So the first question you ask in this famous article is, are you organized? Because some people are naturally organized and some people are not. We can say, uh, to be totally transparent, that none of us is naturally organized. So we have to put some systems. Well, I we mean, can say that some people are just driven, like there's a motor in them and they're constantly organizing, cleaning and checking because it makes them feel some kind of serenity. Yes. Okay, but that's not everyone's personality, right? Yeah. So for those who and don't have I was that saying none of us, I was talking about both of us. Oh, just us, you meant you us. You and me. Oh yeah, but I think you're more organized overall than I am. You have some... You like not to worry about your desktop, but other than that, you're, other than surfaces, you're really good. Yeah, I'm disorganized. So, <laughs> no, you are not. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so you're right. Some of us are more challenged than others when it comes to being organized. Emma Thompson, in the, uh, a book called The Sense and Sensibility Screenplay Diaries, once said, got up this morning and could not find my glasses. Finally had to seek a system and Kate, Kate Winslet, that was probably on the set with yes. her for a movie, found my glasses inside a flower arrangement. Well, it reminds me somebody, which is sitting here, who is sitting here, and that's my wife. You remember this story? Uh, yeah, we were in Italy, I think. Yes? Yes. What happened? Oh, wow. It was a... Well, first of all, we had the panic moment before because I was having some real issues with my bonnet glasses, losing them a lot. Yeah. And remember the time when we were going through Italy and yeah. you and Lyle Roblin, myself, we were panicking and I guess we looked for them for like 45 minutes and they were hanging like on my shirt. Yes. But then and again, I lost them again and... You found them. Do you remember where? In the freezer. Yes, I think we. I beat Emma <laughs> on that one. Yeah, that's. A, I introduced you. This is, ladies and gentlemen, Sonia Glynn. She can I lose like her in glasses freezer. in the freezer. But seeing that, we learned something together as a kind of a perennial rule, as a kind of a very important rule that we try to apply in our life, and it's maybe the most important rule uh, when or, when it's about organization. Is it's try to identify and always keeping up with one stable object. And we call this the primer. Before you get try to get organized, if you're not really naturally organized like I am not, you go actually talk taught me this. Find an item that you're losing a lot. Maybe your keys. For me, it was my glasses. Yes. And for a week or two or three, just make sure that you gain control of that one item. Yes. This gives you confidence, and plus it just gives you a lot of serenity. So now, you have to admit, I rarely lose my glasses. That's, That's right. my stable object. Yes. And I always, if I take my glasses off, because I, when I walk, I bump into things when I wear my glasses. So I just like to wear them when I'm sitting mm. or reading. Yeah. So anyway, long story short, I put them when I exit my room, I put them on my desk. Yes. Every time. 
Yeah. Every time. And yeah. I don't lose my glasses. Yeah. And it's a universal law when you have one step. In one word, apply this, what you apply when about your passport and your your purse, or you know, the thing that you are really important to do, like your passport, your ID, your credit card. Normally, most of them, they know, you know exactly where they are constantly. Yes. Try to apply this to one object that is part of your wardrobe, glasses or a jacket or the, your favorite tie, and always try to know where this single object is. And it will change the whole thing in your brain because you have a stable data you yeah. can rely on. It transforms so much. Find your stable item and keep up with it. Know where it is. Just one all the time. Exactly. And then your second advice is break the cerebral cycle of all thought and non-action, no action, by completing a task from A to Z. Yeah, because I think one of the definitions of insanity is not finishing what you start. So yes. even if it's putting up the dishes in the dishwasher. Yes. Or even if it's just cleaning out the front seats of the car. Yeah. You know, start and finish. We're not yeah. talking about, you know, building something like a, we need to build our red light sauna. Mm -hmm. We haven't even started that because we know we have to finish it if we start it. We're yeah. talking about simple things. Mm -hmm. Making up your bed. Start, finish. Yes. And you're obsessive about that. I'm obsessed you're about obsessive finishing, finishing about an the, action. Making up the bed. Yeah, you know? about oh finishing gosh. an action. Yeah. It is something that the, the if you really start something without finishing it, of course, we're speaking about simple things, not building a house or, okay, our red light therapy sauna, we have it in our uh, attic since how, three years ago? Oh, uh, yes. And we didn't... We don't start it because that's our, it's our <laughs> mantra. If we start it, we have to finish it. So I'm, we didn't even start I'm sorry, it. we are telling our <laughs> anyway. stories, our lives a little bit. But anyway, so two first uh, items. First, have a stable object that you know exactly what it is constantly to train your brain about that. And then second thing, try to finish your action. Okay, all this may sound a little bit simplistic, but believe me, those two tricks, those two tips actually can really change something. Now, let's step up uh, directly in our closet and Sonia Glynn's 12 commandments for organizing your closet. So first of the 12 commandments is Long sleeve shirts shall be hung neatly together with the top two button fastened. Why is that? Well, I just want to talk to the people who feel hopeless. And I'll tell you, every time when I set out to, to do my closet, I always start with the shirts. Yes. It's doable. You know, you can wash your shirts. Yes. And a not too warm temperature so they won't shrink, and then hang them out to dry. And then guess what? This is where it all begins. You take all your shirts, all your clean shirts, you put them together, and you just hang them. We bought similar hangers, yes. small investment, because it's more beautiful. Mm -hmm. And just hang each shirt up, white shirts together, blue shirts together, pattern shirts together, and put them in your closet, and then just look at your accomplishment. Yeah. It's so gratifying, it and it's uplifting. a wonderful place to start. Exactly. Just think about the shirts. And buttoning the first and the second button is my way of doing it, but I don't know if it's the right way, there's no right way or wrong way, but I think it looks more neat, and I think it's, it, it prevents the shirt from Yeah, it being... stabilizes the shirt. I yeah. mean, if you, if you after a while, you just want to do the top button, it's okay, but if you really like to stabilize your shirts, mm -hmm. because it keeps the form nicely, you just do the first two buttons, and it's prettier in the closet. Of course. If your shirts are ironed, it's even better. That's the top. You know, the best is to have all your yeah. shirts ironed. But we don't line. do that. But we don't do. Sometimes, <laughs> no. even early an iron shirt, they can be just neatly put on the hanger. So basically, it's a good start. If you yes. are trying to start something about your clothes, start with the shirts. It's Always quite, start with it's the shirts. very easy. Second commandment, casual shirt uh, slash sweaters shall be folded, not hung, and positioned where they are easy to see. Why well, that? unless you have just an enormous closet, okay, you can't just hang everything. And plus, those aren't your dress-up clothes. Those, those aren't your classic 
clothes in terms of jacket, nice mm-hmm. shirt, you know, et cetera. And so these casual clothes can be folded and easily seen. And sometimes you want to get dividers so they're not slipping around. And yes. you can find those on Amazon. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so it's so simple. So you hang the, the dress shirts yes. and you fold the more casual item. That's the, the rule. Yes, and, put, I mean, and group them together. Own. Polos together, sweaters together. So simple. Okay. Number three. Trousers shall be, uh, one, suspended from the hem using sliding clip hangers. So there's different kind of hangers, but basically the idea is to for the trousers to have time to find their shape again, right? Mm-hmm. Or use the famous Savile Row fold. We're going to yes. show it to you on the screen because it's difficult to explain like that. But basically, those two techniques is to make sure that you keep your pants free of wrinkles. Yes, and basically there's two camps, right? The people who want to fold their trousers and drape them over the long horizontal part of the hanger and those who prefer, like you go, to turn them upside down and clip them and let them hang. Yes. He was very, he's very methodic with he, keeping his clothes nice. Since I've known him for more than a decade, you are so methodic. You always put your shoe trees in your shoes. Yeah. You're turning your trousers upside down and hanging them so they suspend and, and, and Please keep Please don't spare my blushes because I'm going to blush. It's and it's crazy how <laughs> consistent you are. I mean, you know, I wouldn't, I would call you out if you were and you are so consistent. I'm impressed. That's for sure. So, number four, fourth commandment: casual pants. Well, let's say denims, denims, denims yes. shall be suspended by the belt loops and positioned near formal trousers. It's just a different method, and who wants to, you know, get psycho with their denims? And so there are these cute little devices where you can just hook the belt loop onto, it's, they're like little miniature hangers, yeah. onto the hanger and the denims are suspended. I will ask Cosmos to hand me um, uh, the denims I have here with a hanger and I'm going to show you what you can do if you can't find these little devices that we're suggesting for you because uh, some play, you know sometimes you can get them in America, you can't get them in England, you yeah. can get them in Europe. So anyway, let me show you something very simple. My wife is great. We were supposed to do a B-roll, but she decided otherwise. All so of a sudden. look at this. Okay. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. It's the same effect. Okay, I like the little devices, uh, the other specialized hangers. But if you're not able to uh, get those, just suspend your denims like this. That's great. So you That's prefer these than folding them, actually. You can put them on the floor. Yeah, right? come, no problem. Come on. You can, don't, going to extremes is only going to make you crazy. Okay, I agree with that. Number five, this is probably my favorite. Real angers with shoulder support shall be used to suspend your suit, your coats, your blazers, or your jacket. And this is very important. We are speaking of the fact that your bespoke suit, even of the rug, but beautiful suits and jacket deserve a real hanger. That is to say, with a shape specifically on the shoulder that will support the shoulder. Please, ladies and gentlemen, stop putting your beautiful jacket and suit on this terrible um, metallic hanger that uh, your dry cleaning um, company is giving you. This is for free. a crime. Oh, you guys actually suit. obsessive about this too. You have the thick hangers, and yeah. they're about the same length of your jacket. Yes, uh, horizontally, shoulder to shoulder. And wow, you feel so good. You're putting it on the nice hanger, and the the, shoulder, the jacket's holding its form. Yes, and hey, it's simple. Yeah, one of the the first to speak about that was our friend Kirby Allison. Yes, with very his, good. Uh, back in the years, uh, it was called the Hanger Project. Now I know he's more general store, uh, <laughs> on right. the, a general e-store for, e-store. for, mm-hmm. for um, classic style. But he was saying, you, you tailor your clothes, why don't you tailor your hanger? So at his place, and now you can find it in many other places, you can have different width depending on your hanger. So please, for your beautiful suits and jacket, use proper hangers. Yes, which yours are wooden, or, and some of them are plastic. Well, I mean, and some of them have a felt covering. Some of them, for example, so, but Kirby's at Taylor's, the pioneer, that's at for Taylor, sure. they will give you plastic one. Yes. You know why? Because it's easier to travel with. Oh, it's lighter, yeah. It's lighter. That's a good point. But the good thing point. is that it has to have a real shape and reinforcement at the shoulder so that it can mm. really maintain Makes your suits. Uh, all the sense in the world. Number six, sixth commandment of organizing your clothes is about mm. neckties. And we often receive the same question. How do you organize your t- 
ties because believe me, Sonia and I, we have... We tried different methods. We have a lot of ties. My dad put them in a drawer flat, which was kind of messy. Yeah. And then some people roll them up and line them up, which takes too much time. Yeah. But everybody knows about the pegs. Right? Yeah, I mean, so the for me, it's uh, there's no other... There's no bad, better solution than having... Uh, this hanger with little brass pegs or whatever yes. metal pegs mm -hmm. and that you can most of the time they are they have two sides yeah there's one hanger and there's pegs on each side so exactly. you can just really pack in a lot of neckties very neatly and yeah. a pioneer of hangers Kirby Allison also was yeah many, many, many that. people and are many selling others this, too, yeah. but the one we are we prefer are, are both and I think you can put up to 50 ties or something like that on just one hanger That's so insane. it's very very it's handy insane, yes. and on top of that you when you want to to choose a tie you don't have to go through you don't have to go swimming through your ties. You just look like that, and you see almost all of them. Hanging. It's so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah this is, it's not a big investment, but if you are tie lovers like us, and believe me, we have a lot. A we lot do. We of have ties. to have these things. We, we have, have to have, have to. these things. So, commandment number seven. It's so funny to speak about our closet. One drawer shall be dedicated to only socks, and that's probably one of the wisest, huh. because you know, wisest uh, advice, because you know socks, everybody knows this problem of the single sock, or socks are, you know, socks are this kind of special animal, they go everywhere. Yeah, you socks can, find can them. climb in your brain and make you mad. <laughs> I mean, exactly. you can't mix them with your underwear and your pocket squares and your jewelry, or, I mean, no, just only socks in yeah. that drawer. It, it'll help you keep your sanity. And uh, there's some really cool devices to separate the socks. We have yep. a picture of one that we can show. Yep. Um, we are actually just rolling them up and, and putting them in lines. But yep. I want to get this um, this accessory oh, to actually, separate our socks. Actually, we don't even I have this that. one. No, it's a beautiful we're accessory. dreaming of it. I haven't found it yet. So yeah. if anyone finds it, that's uh, right. Put a so link in. one drawer for socks, it will save you a lot of, you know, nervosity and stuff like that because there's nothing worse than finding a single socks. And yeah, for me, socks are alive. I don't know how this little object can go under your bed, yeah. and mix, mix everywhere. So one drawer for the socks, that's a very, very simple thing. Please only do this. It Besides, can change uh, a lot of I, there was a story, a, a machine repairman, uh, washing machine repairman has said in the past yes. that he that the so the machines really do eat the socks and mm -hmm. that there actually are in the machine many times. Oh, yeah, so yeah, it's yeah, not yeah, a yeah. it's not a fable. That's another That's story. Not, yeah. Commandment number eight: Small boxes shall be used to organize your pocket oh, square squares. because pocket square. Okay, if you are in the tutorial world, you probably have a lot of pocket square, and I tell you why: because it's an easy item to buy if you want to to gift somebody to give as a gift because it's always a success socks and yes, pocket square are right. always a success when you want to really treat somebody but also for yourself it's easy to buy and when you are in the tutorial world and you understand the power of your pocket square actually I don't wear one today I explained to you why because I tried to put not too many accessories, and I decided, as I am tireless today, I wanted to remain a little bit more relaxed, mm -hmm. and I just put this little little um, uh, lapel pin. pin, and so lapel pin, for me, I don't put a pocket square when I put a lapel pin, that's all. But for your pocket square, use small boxes, any kind of box, for example, shoe boxes, or any kind of boxes to separate, to divide your pocket square, uh, in one place. We have tiny drawers that, yeah. that we use, and it yeah, works yeah. well. This works is well. very good. Okay, now number nine, shoes. Okay, shoes shall be kept in clear view. That is to say, you don't have to deep dive and, you know, bend and even mm -hmm. swim under your bed to, to find some, no. In clear view, with shoe trees always inside. Okay, if you don't have the means to have one pair of shoe tree for each uh, shoes, remember the advice, uh, you have to have the more recently worn shoes have to have shoe trees. But the best is to have shoe trees in every single pair of shoe and they have to be easy to see. So you wear your shoes, you take them off, you put your shoe trees in and you may have to take them from a pair that's been sitting in your closet for a while and then just 
rotate them around. Exactly. It's, it's simple. This is very yes, simple. Yes, and the, the main thing is keep the shoes off the floor. Like Even if you have to get a, a shelf that's just uh, rising about three inches above the floor, um, you'll find that if you keep the shoes off the floor, it's going to make you feel like you've really accomplished something. Shoes on the floor, try it. It won't work. It feels so much better to keep them up and away from the floor for dust mm. as well. And you add in your article, it's a little note set, keep a buffing glove within reach to buff away pesky dust which gathers on shoes. You had that really cool one that rolled up the travel buffing mm, glove. It's from Saphir? Yeah, it's easy it's to from find. Saphir. It's a little glove and it's, it's so, so easy, easy to use to and help. find. Okay, number 10, so only three to go. Dirty, unironed, iron and unpolished item shall be placed beside clean item to the far left, oh, that's my wife. <laughs> it can be to the far right, it doesn't matter, but you put them to the far left. It's for those of you who are losing your clothes a lot. You know, if you have a laundry system with a certain basket with certain clothes, that's fine. Don't put your shirts um, in, in, in a condensed pile because if you wear like some kind of deodorant, it's gonna seep, we've had this problem before, it's gonna seep onto the other shirts, it can stain. But we like to, when we really have it together, take the dirty shirts and put them on one side of the clean shirts. Just, yeah. just hang them there. Yeah. And they're always there, and you know what needs to be washed and what doesn't. Exactly. That's a very, very simple rule, but it works very well. 11, you went to the old English. You say, though shalt wash, iron, polish your clothes and shoes each or every other weekend. Two, two times a month. Yeah. Just dedicate two two times a month. Who to, um, is the best your... ironing man you know in the world? The person I'm looking at right now. <laughs> I'm just joking. I love to iron. It might sound a little bit weird to many gentlemen who are looking at this um, show, or maybe very rejoicing to many women who are looking at this show, uh, or uh, depressing for dry cleaners, but me, I love to iron my shirts. You do, and I mean, you could probably do an Instagram thing for your Sunday ironing, or you know, there's a lot of men who are doing this Sunday shoe polishing. Oh, I don't want to do that. And they look forward to it. It's a ritual, and you're seeing the Sunday shoe <laughs> polish ritual. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, of they, course, of They're course. obsessed with doing this. It actually relaxes them. You can't yeah. understand that, but you can understand how ironing relaxes you. Well, it's really something I like to do. It smells good. It's very it rewarding. Smells it smells, yeah, the, 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 the vapor. The, the vapor, and I don't know, it's very relaxing, and it's, I don't know, I, I, I can listen to some uh, radio show, some podcast. I'm, I love to iron, and of course, I like to shine my shoes also. But I'm not going as Cannot far. Cannot relate to that. No, I yeah, wish but, I could. Yes, but I'm not going as far as the people you are talking about, which are great people, but they're really going very they're really far, hardcore. spending mm. hours spitting on the shoes. You know, doing a mirror glass or all this kind of stuff. I'm not going that far, but I must admit, it's a good habit during the weekend to iron a few shirts and polish a few shoes. It doesn't well take time, put. but it's I not really complicated. So the 12th commandment is you shall occasionally air out and brush suits, use cedar in your closet, and almost always avoid dry cleaning. So. I'm sorry, specifically it can sound a little bit strange if you live in Especially the United States. Especially to Americans, yes. Yeah, because I've seen so many people get That's their, even their shirt and suit delivered by dry cleaners. Okay, it could be a disaster. First of all, the chemicals aren't that great. And secondly, uh, your lapels on your suit can accidentally get ironed. Yes. I mean, there's, and it, it wears down the fabric yep. over and over And if you're dry cleaning continuously. Yep. And so it's really better not to use a dry cleaner to have your tailor or mm -hmm. your alteration tailor yep. refresh your suits but don't be the kind of person who never goes to the dry cleaner and just leaves the suits in the closet for years you have to take those suits outside sometime let them air out mm. and refresh themselves that's a simple rule ladies and gentlemen and once again i have nothing against dry cleaners we don't use them we never use them but it's our personal choice because we love our suits yes it doesn't mean that you have to wear dirty suits. No, it's very simple rule. You wear a suit, when you come back home, you, you put them on the proper hanger, you open a little bit of window if it's possible, let air out your suit, it's very cool. And then when they really need something a little bit more serious, either you have a serious 
laundry service mm -hmm. in your hometown because mm -hmm. some laundry are some really of them good. are used to um, working with bespoke exactly suits, right. well we don't not, not going to go into technical stuff you take yours to Lorenzo and he does it yeah too. normally mm -hmm. when you go bespoke your tailor will mm -hmm. take care mm -hmm. of your suit but uh, without going into too technical when you have a free floating canvas the person taking care of your suit should have um, a table which uh, with pulsed air so that it can re can make the canvas and the fabric goes like that you know so that it can really be pressed so we we rather say go and take your suit to the press with only steam to the but press. no no chemicals yes this is very important warning do not air your suits out at night and do not open the windows at night moths can fly in and eat well, your clothes and it's as the mass amount of traveling that we've done, we've encountered moths before, and it's usually because nighttime, um, opening the windows and letting yeah. the moths fly in. Of course, the use cedar as much as you can because moths don't like cedar, but moth is a universal problem. We've loaded our closets with cedar um, pellets and yes. also some, some moth repellent. We got it at an organic co op store yeah. that we spray. We're very diligent. Because yes, we've yes. Had and even, even with this, we can have a few accidents here and there. And guess what? The moth are luxurious moth with us because they eat uh, the, uh, the cashmere eat <laughs> most the of the time. And yeah. the socks. And the socks. They, they like it. So try to use cedar, try to use. Less, the less the least chemical possible. If I mean, we are very mm. sensitive to that, but you have to protect your suit and your jacket. And for the dry cleaners, once again, I apologize. I know there's great professional in this area. Yes, I think they're uh, they're even evolving to be able to take care of customs and bespoke suits at that point. Exactly. At this point. So as a conclusion, I'm going to read the conclusion of Sonia's article on Parisian gentlemen, and she writes, caring for our clothes and being able to quickly find what we want to wear can clear the mind for other purposes. So it might not be as superficial as it may sound because it can really clear your mind for actual important purposes of your day. Is that right, darling? Yes, it's not taking up time that you should be spending doing other things. Exactly. Efforts to use to locate a lost sock or spot clean a forgotten dirty shirt may not seem like a big deal, but at some point such experiences deplete our energy. And you, you finish like that, and I love it. If you like good clothing and are ready to stop making excuses for being disorganized, getting your closet in order will allow you to enjoy your clothing investment, because this is all about protecting also your investment, right? Yes. Uh, remember, the absence of organization can eventually become maddening and cause a trap in cerebral thought and inaction creating irritability and restlessness. A warning though, and I love that, obsessive, and you have to help me with this word, organizational, organizational maniacs. Say it again. Organizational maniacs. Organizational maniacs. So obsessive organizational maniacs, remember I'm just French, are more tiring than feeling disorganized. The act of order should bring joy and calmness to life, while the spirit of nitpicking, judgmental, finger-pointing, and a know-it-all attitude destroys a sense of peacefulness. I married yes. a wise woman that's sweet but i have to warn you if you do organize your closet you're going to probably want to organize your drawers and if you organize your drawers you're probably going to want to organize your kitchen if you organize your kitchen you're probably going to want to organize your car and well, it can go on but you don't have to be obsessive and it's going to feel really good you know because you can dedicate time to the things mm. that are really important to you instead of looking for things yeah and that's but what i take away from all that is first of all protecting serenity investment. and then protecting your yes. investment honestly yes. if you put five or six thousand dollars in a bespoke suit or if you have a smaller means like at least 500 even 500 to 800 in the suit please take care of it because yes. it's an it's a long lasting investment a well maintained suit will last you the whole life that's the idea and i feel like i got really hyper on this episode because i'm so excited about the subject but i hope i didn't trip over my words too much and i hope that you received the message that we were trying to Give. You were perfect, darling. Okay. And I have a suggestion. <laughs> what? You know what we're going to do next? 
I know, because you said last time it wasn't have a glass of wine. So imagine this time it is have a glass of wine. Well, have a glass of wine, or you choose. Maybe we go and organize our own oh, closet. Okay, no, I choose. <laughs> I'm just joking. The first. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for listening <laughs> to you. us. If you are new to this channel, you can say, is it a spoof? Is it a, tr uh, a comedy of people speaking uh, 45 <laughs> minutes uh, of organizing your closet? No, it is not a spoof. This is really us. We are real people. Hugo Jacome and Sonia Glynn. And we hope you liked this episode. We give you an appointment to the next episode of Sotorial Talks. And in the meantime, cheers. cheers.